B, have you seen the Netflix show Black AF with Kenya Barris? Yes, you've made me watch that show before. Have I made you watch it? Yeah, I've watched it. And the first episode <laughs> was, uh, it should have been called Pilot, but Kenya Barris, you know, he's a rebel, so. What did he do? It was it was titled because of slavery. <laughs> oh yeah, that's the, that's the reason. Still of because everything. of slavery. That was the reason because of everything. every episode was because of slavery. Because of slavery. Because so, of slavery. in honor of of Black History Month <laughs> and Black AF, Kenya Barris, and I'm not going to honor slavery, obviously, but um, like, <laughs> I feel like I'm not Kanye I'm not Westing, Kanye the Westing this <laughs> shit today. Not today, sir. Not today, madam. <laughs> Oh um, my gosh. <laughs> this is this is this one's entitled Black Privilege. So Black Privilege. Okay. Black Privilege. Black Privilege. And we got that because of slavery. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So, there you go. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Hey y'all, it's Onika. And it's your girl B. And you are dishing with Dainty Dish. How are you doing today, B? No, scratching and surviving. I think that is scratching so appropriate for good Black History times, Good times, hanging time. in a chairman. Ooh, good right. times. Two references there. Yeah. The show Good, good Times you know, and refer- Dave Chappelle. And Dave Chappelle, <laughs> who's made a big comeback that uh, our producer, Ellie, Ellie, is not on the mic. Uh, I'm going to call him <laughs> out. Mostly because you didn't want to set one up. So, but that's okay. Uh, but that's he works okay. hard. He works very, very He's hard. He's cameraman today, too. He's cameraman. He's got to be cameraman. Tiana's on the house. He's- She's not feeling well. Tiana, shout out to you. Hope you're doing well, boo. Hope yes. you're resting and drinking a lot of fluids. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's not the COVID. Like, relax. It's like, just relax. It's not <laughs> the COVID. People get regular yeah, colds get and riled, yeah, People now. get regular illnesses still. Right. You know, it's still a thing. Um, so, TT, shout out to you. I uh, hope you're feeling better. Sorry you couldn't be here with us. So, so we have Elle um, doing multiple jobs today. Yeah, so Elle's, Elle's wearing multiple hats. <laughs> he's wearing multiple hats. So, he's not, he's like, I'm not wearing the mic hat, too. Yeah, so. that's that's too much. That's We're exceeding. Much. Yeah, you're We're exceeding. exceeding. Asking too exceeding much. limits. <laughs> it's exceeding limits. It's okay. We oh you. my gosh. So it is Black History Month. And historically this month has bought many challenges. So we just um, uh, appreciate the fact that we don't just celebrate it once a month. It's every month. It's every month, month for black people. Right. We don't it's need everyone. February. We we celebrate the ourselves. Month. The shortest every, month. But don't don't harp but don't harp on the show. I've been here in the shortest month since high school. Like that's it's number the, one. It's the shortest month. It's the shortest month since what, high school. We get an extra day every four. Every, every four, four years, years we get an extra day. Whoopsie do. That's an extra day to talk about. You I'm know why it's awesome to black be black every single day. So. Yeah, we're black every day. So we got three sixty five mm. Black History Month days. Like I'm just telling you, like why <laughs> shortest one. <laughs> like why harp on the shortest month? I'm just saying. No, but it is Black History Month, and um, I thought, um, I'm sure people are talking about, like, black mental health, and we're going to get into a little bit of that, of course, but I wanted to um, talk about why uh, we're privileged to be black. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be today's episode. But before we get into that, Bianca, hit him with the she hits me with it always right off the right rope. off the like, just boom right off the bat like, boom just boom, right boom. off the bat I pitch it to you if you don't like it you can pitch it back I'm amazingly <laughs> catch her I'll catch it what, I'll catch it whatever I'll, whatever that reference meant pitch it to pitch it, I'm a pitcher and a catcher so do saying. you watch baseball no not at all <laughs> cool <laughs> that's, like, cool 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 that's... I've never sat through or watched one baseball game and I once was in the Sky Dome Skybox hotel. Oh, uh, and I still gosh. didn't watch the game. You're what list. So <laughs> our first news flash today comes from Global News, and it's titled "Strike." Ooh, ooh, mm, what was going on with my tongue there? Just mm-hmm. pff, sorry. Uh, strength <laughs> isn't what <laughs> strength <laughs> isn't what you carry. Black women open up about mental health. So, um, 
there's a warning. So I'm going to give every, our audience the warning. It says the article may be triggering for some readers. Please read at your own discretion. So please listen at your own discretion at, at this article. Fast forward if you need to. So um, Stacey Ann uh, Butchin waited 10 years for this moment. Um, it was the evening of March uh, 2012. Uh, and... What? And the then 30-year-old was putting together a local art show. Uh, it was the art of... Oh, sorry. My phone screen's cracked, so I'm seeing a little extra. <laughs> I'm not even, even going to scroll with you guys. Like, my phone oh, screen and is my phone so is cracked used. that, like... I just give me a little, give me a little time with this. Just give so, her a breath. <laughs> give her just a little bit of, a so, little bit of empathy, guys. It was years in the making. The struggling mm-hmm. actress from Toronto tried to find her purpose in battling anxiety and depression. At the same time, um, she called this the show Mystic Effect, uh, and it would be her last mark in the world. Oh, uh, in my mind, not telling anyone after the show was going to take, I was going to take my own life. Um, but as she watched the people appreciate her music, dance and fashion, she had curated. She realized that this day would be far from her last. Uh, while Butchin wasn't able to talk openly about her mental health at that time. Today, she is an advocate and the host of the blind stigma podcast. Um, so shout that out, you know, blind podcast, stigma podcast. podcast. um, she's going, she has ongoing discussions on mental health and what it means in the black community. So, um, the article just goes on to say that as co- the COVID-19 pandemic pushes through with the topic of mental health and uh, the forefront of conversations, um, conversations about mental health are vital and black women are speaking up about it like we are as well. Yes. Um, she touches on growing up in the Jamaican community and saying how uh, the mental health is swept under the rug um, and shamed. Uh, her conversations with her parents were difficult and initially roadblocked with layers of um, intergenerational and misinformation about mental health. So we feel that on a deep level. Yeah. We're West Indian. So, Pray the you know. <laughs> um, She goes on to say that when she approached her dad about it, um, he responded to the idea of depression and anxiety that, uh, hey, look at what you said just before I was about to read it. It was something that you could pray away. Pray <laughs> the cray away. It's a thing, guys. I it's made it not up. It's funny, but I like, copyright this is, it. This I is, copyright that term. The, their fear um, is that the shame and the reflection uh, that that's put on them. Um, parents in the Jamaican community and Caribbean community and black community take it as a reflection on their parenting skills that they didn't do well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Sorry, he was just uh, he just honestly said it was what he was taught. And this is generational, which we've experienced um, and a lot of other people have experienced as well. Um, Lakita, Lakita Carter, a licensed psychologist and uh, vice president of the Black Mental Health Alliance, said that there are some mental health uh, challenges unique to the black community. She says that culture cultural barriers in the Caribbean community often push religion at the fir- at the first and only as the first and only option mm-hmm. uh, for many black women mm-hmm. uh, Carter says going to therapy is the last resort um, before you go to therapy you would normally check with your pastor at church or ask the church elders to get help uh, with COVID-19 pandemic fraying the fabric of these connections she says that uh, it can especially be isolating for black women who uh, predominantly find counsel in religion. Uh, but going to church and seeking mental health support is not uh, mutually exclusive, Carter adds. Um, if someone is struggling, if someone is struggling with, why don't I just use my faith? Uh, well, the answer is that you can use both. Mm. Uh, Carter says that the strength in black women is undeniable, but uh, it shouldn't be overpowered the ability to seek health. Um, strength isn't what you carry. It's what you choose to put down. Mm. I like that. I like that. That's a very, it's a very, it's a very good quote. So I'll repeat that again. So strength isn't what you carry. It is what you choose to put down. Hmm. So, um, it's a sentiment that she uses daily, uh, not only as a woman of color, but also as a black mom. Um, she also goes on to discuss further into the Black Mom Connections group, which I follow by um, Tanya Hayes. Um, she says that for Black moms seeking mental health support, finding mom groups to, uh, open to this discussion of intersection 
this is gonna be a tongue twister ready intersectionalities of black identities can be difficult um i have so many moms who at at any time they try to bring up race and other mom groups and they would just get kicked out uh people would rather (laughs) avoid the conversation about race and racism and then try to engage um Hey, um, Hales also says that it's important to have s- support spaces specifically for black women uh, like BC- BMC. Sorry, my dyslexia kicks in sometimes when there's letters, <laughs> numbers. <laughs> I have, I have miles. I'm sorry, I'm not even lying to you. It happens sometimes. Like, I, I, I understand. I, <laughs> well, just so well, understand. informed therapists from the background could teach resilience uh, but offer support. So, um, you know what? This article goes on a very long time. Yeah, it's so global. Yeah, it's so global yeah. news. I'm not going to lie. Global is very thorough. And, and they're I'm, very and thorough. They're we very appreciate thorough you, news. Global. They're very but thorough. But we're going to move on. We're going to move um, on. If you'd like to continue reading that article, Ooh. you could go on Global. We'll leave that link. In yeah, the, we'll put the link in the description. In the description. Uh, so we're going to go what on. What was the title of that one again? Uh, the title of that one, sorry, was Strength Isn't What You Carry. Black Women Open Up about um mental health so okay well it's so. a good leading because we're two black women and we're opening up so yeah yeah that's why yeah, I, I, yeah. Thought was a, I thought it was a great lead. could you tie could in, you guys tell in, like in. you know like yeah. i guess i picked yeah. i, I, picked I appreciate you and, i appreciate you <laughs> i appreciate your effort a so, for effort <laughs> so the next article is from people people magazine brief brief Swift to the point. People's like, chat, 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 chat. Let's cut it down. Let's go. Let's cut it down. So, like, four chat, female chat, 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 psychologists chat, chat, chat. create mental health companies for black community. Break the stigma. Um, so this article is written by Jolie Goldstein um, or Goldstein. I could be wrong. I'm Goldstein. 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 Okay. So meet Dr. Nicole uh, Kamak, Dr. Danielle Busby, uh, Dr. Dana Cunningham and Dr. Jessica Henry. So these are the the four black women we're going to be talking about in this article. Um, they're a group of four psychologists setting out to make waves in their uh, company, Black Mental Wellness. Um, so while each of the women bring unique experiences and, and expertise to the table, the team is you united beyond one mission. We're re- we're really trying to break down the stigma about mental health services in the black community. Cunningham 44 tells people. I just love that everybody's, we're all on the same page. We're all trying to do the same thing. Yeah, this is, it's refreshing. It's, and you know, as with coming from, I was, I was alone out there for felt like 15 years. I was alone <laughs> out there. There was no black people. There was nobody people talking about this. Up and yeah. they're saying, we need help. You know, they're not just relying on prayer. Like, I'll let you get back to your news flash and no, we'll talk no, about that right. later. But, that, you know, it's just, it's so refreshing to see. It's so yeah. refreshing to see. So, since spring Progress. 2018, the organization has been providing cultural sens- uh, sensitive educational resources, programs, and workshops, and many of them are free of charge, according to their website. Um, they also offer ambassador programs mm-hmm. for students and working professionals um, in order to promote mentorships and establish partnerships across the country so they say if we look at the history of uh medical health care and black people um it hasn't treated us well uh busby Mm. 32 says referencing recent ucla article on the legacy of mistrust in the health care for the black community according to the national alliance of mental health uh n-a-m-i uh, black black adults in the U.S. are more likely than white adults to report to report persistent symptoms of emotional distress, but only one in three black adults who need mental health can receive it. But uh, mental health care can receive it. Additionally, additionally, black adults are less likely to receive guideline uh, consistent care, less frequent less frequently included in the mental health research and more likely to use emergency rooms or primary care instead of mental health specialists. NAMI reports. Yeah, I just made, I, I did the abbreviation like a word, NAMI. NAMI. <laughs> I don't the mental health community. I'm not about, about to read is. these letters again and embarrass myself and put, and put them in the wrong order. NAMI. Yeah, NAMI. <laughs> 
It's I can hard probably for- guess what that means. That there's so many an- like anagrams and oh, it's too many. It's, too <laughs> it's, many. it's hard for me to tell people to come receive services when I see it's not always safe or we don't always have the resources for this particular group of people. Uh, Busby adds. Um, that's what uh, that's what made me so passionate about this. Having resources available to make those things happen is really important. Um, the idea of black mental health well black mental wellness uh, initially came from uh, Camac thirty nine. I hope I'm not butchering your ladies' names. Like you guys are doing a great thing, so please forgive me. Um, while she was working with activity duty service members on military base in 2016. So at the time, there were a lack of there was a lack of information that was accessible to uh, everyday people, um, and it was glaring how many Black women were suffering in silence. Explaining uh, Kamek, who also is a program director of mental health clinic in DC based VA Medical Center. So I wanted, she said, I wanted to create a resource that spoke. Uh, to what mental health means in the black community, she says she helped redefine the strong bla- the strong black woman be- being able to ask for help. Um, mm-hmm. She also took action and started a company solo before rallying. You see, you see, you start by yourself. You brought your bri- branch off. You brought it up. <laughs> you brought it up. <laughs> you brought it up. Uh- you brought it up. <laughs> So uh, Kamak took action and started her company solo before rallying uh, Busby, Cunningham, and Henry, uh, acquaintances she had met at various points in her life to join uh, the executive team. See? I just, it just reminds yeah, sometimes us. it happens over a cup yeah. of coffee. Sometimes <laughs> it happens over just, like, a lifetime. You never know. So, they... Um, Sorry, inspired by uh, witnessing or experiencing the issue in the black community firsthand, all three were instantly on board. So Henry, a clinical director for a maximum security male prison in Georgia, says that she saw it regularly with most of her inmates. Uh, They don't get treatment until they're in prison. Uh, That's unfortunate because a lot of them have traumatic histories, says Henry, 37. Uh, I wanted to bring something new to our community. So... Once again, I'll let you let you guys read this. Yeah, we're gonna more, put them more broadly so we can get into our our own discussion. Yeah, but um, you know, it's nice just to even just see that the ladies come from so many different walks of life, and they mm-hmm. could each say that they experienced it separately. Um, like black mental health being an issue, um, you know, from different aspects, mm-hmm. like so, just refreshing. So, if you guys would like to, we're just gonna put the we're gonna put the articles in the bottom yeah. in our description <laughs> in description. like i'm not gonna read it again i'm just gonna put it in our description um in the description the last one really quick because it it it, it involves it involves <laughs> our <laughs> self, you know it involves our <laughs> south neighbors we have okay, to talk about our right, good south right, neighbors right. it's about biden <laughs> to the south. it's about biden hey joe Listen. joe's gonna get it done joe 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 joe, 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 joe. he's joe. gonna get it done he was joe's he gonna get it done a black man for eight years he knows our <laughs> suffering and pain he knows <laughs> they are best friends they still probably have phone calls on a day-to-day basis i'm sorry let's talk about joe biden real quick so biden wants to fix racial inequality <laughs> mental health access is an important part uh place to start so as we know you know our down south neighbors don't have a lot of Healthcare. Access, and health- access healthcare. to healthcare. <laughs> they don't have a. They don't especially, have all hit like we do. Since people tried to take away their Obamacare, their Obamacare <laughs> uh, people, the Donalds. Yeah, uh, you know. So this is this is a really big thing for them, unlike us, where we have access to different avenues and different yeah. systems. So um, President Joe Biden has committed to tackling this. The um, the. S- I'm gonna. I'm just gonna look over at you because I'm gonna say it wrong. It looks like Scrooge, but I don't think it's Scrooge. Scourge, scourge, scourge. When you have an angle, oh, scourge. Like, when you have a sister who scourge, <laughs> scourge. See, I was close. I didn't want to embarrass myself though. So Joe, Joe Biden has committed to tackling the scourge of systemic racism and has plagued our nation since its inception. Yes. Powerful words, Joe Biden. To that end, he he uh, signed an executive order on racial equality on his first days in office. Um, first on days. Wednesday night. So this was this was uh, shared with us February seventeenth. So in the month of Black History, 
Go, maybe he could do something about this making the month show. longer. <laughs> maybe, no, maybe, he'll, maybe he made maybe a declaration. Maybe he'll give us about, November. You know, 365. You know, just, uh, it doesn't have to be two months. 365 would be better for me. Um, so Wednesday night at the town hall and CNN com- uh, committed its administration to this goal, particularly the need to change relationships between communities of color and the police. Um, this Black mm. History Month, we call upon the Biden administration to prioritize the mental health of black and brown communities by addressing their lack of access to such care. Uh, but in fully addressing the impact of racial inequality in our societies to meet the promise of these executive orders and to truly uh, contend with the structural racism that he noted uh, Im- imbues that the criminal justice and other systems. Sorry, that was a lot of words, so I probably didn't influct right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> access to cru- access, access to culturally uh competent mental health and addiction treatment is needed um this black history month we call upon the oh sorry i they did the italicized thing i forgot that that's part of the article oh, God. <laughs> sorry sorry forgive me guys so um as i said and i'll say it again the this black history month we call upon the biden administration to prioritize the mental health of black and brown communities by addressing their lack of access in such care Right now in America, symptoms of depression are three times as high as as they they were uh, pre-pandemic. And as of January, 41% of adults reported reported symptoms of anxiety and or depressive disorders, uh, up four times as high as reported pre-pandemic levels. Um, But that burden isn't shared uh, equally. While pre-pandemic rates... Um, of substance use, depression, anxiety, and serious mental illness among black Americans are more or less similar to the general population. Access to treatment is significantly low for black Americans across the border, especially Mm -hmm. during COVID-19. Prior to the coronavirus, black Americans were experiencing mental health impacts born of intergenerational trauma, community violence, lack of cultural competent care and higher likelihood of misdiagnosis of schizophrenia uh met with the lack of access to medication and therapeutics therapeutic supports resulting in untreated mental illnesses this is oft this is too often all as a result of targeting a result in targeting by an entanglement with law enforcement i've been talking to jada cool Mm. my tongue (laughs) the legal system and as opposed to involvement with the health and social system thus perpetuating further cycles of trauma and violence so wrapping this up i'll just say so prior to the pandemic um an estimated 119 million people were already living in mental health care professional shortage areas uh also known as mental health desert meaning they were unable to access mental health care because of the low number of mental health providers relative to the needs of the population. Most of those living in mental health deserts are people of color um, and those in rural areas. For instance, in the Bronx, one of the areas of New York City's hardest hit by the pandemic, 91% of residents insured by uh, Medicaid live in a mental health desert. The vast majority of them are black and brown and low income. Okay. So that was a very thorough news flash. Girl, you listen. <laughs> you wanted the news and I gave it to you. You you gave me the news. I girl. gave you some thorough news for our listeners about mm. black history. Because they're not getting it in school right now. Oh, Lord. and I guarantee you, you they're know. not getting it in the news. <laughs> getting it in the news, so, so we gotta collect that news for so them. I'm collecting it for them, and I'm slapping it down. Black black privilege, take it away. Oh, this uh, there's gonna be there's gonna be more more speeches. <laughs> <laughs> She was just mad that I was taking up her speech that's, time. Honestly, that's the truth. That's I was what like, the. That's you're what the. Really stealing my thunder right wow. now with all this news flashing that we're doing. You told me um, to read news flashes. No, but that I wanted to talk to... about you know like we, you gave some good facts there though, some good factual uh, evidence, 
you know, as black people, and I, I mentioned earlier when I was talking to you, I was I was mentioning this. This all goes back to slavery. It 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 truly does. And I just want to preface everything I'm about to say and everything I'm, that's going to be on this episode with this. I'm not attacking any population of people. You know, I'm not. I'm not. We are not attacking any one specific population of people. I'm not cracking jokes off of anybody. Yeah, we're not. This is a, this. I'm talking about. You know, we're part of BPOC, which is Black Indigenous People of Color. But in the month of February, I'm representing B. <laughs> you're like you're all. I'm, I'm all, all about. I'm B. all for the B. I'm, I'm all about. All I'm all about, about so I'm, I can't I'm speak about on blacks. the experience of the other populations and what they've gone through and their history but i do know and i am aware of my history and what my people have gone through this is over. a history major people this is a history <laughs> i have a history degree from carlton we'll talk yeah. about that in the speech so uh, like it's all in there mm. trust me mm. um but i just want to preface it with we're not and we're not it's not an, about being angry and wanting justifications and apologies and we we're never gonna get our forty acres and a mule, and we mm. get that. But there needs I'll to be a one. shift. There needs to be. I'll, I'll take one acre, you know, at this point. But there needs to be a shift. There needs to be a change, and that's what's important. You know, people. You know, black people are struggling because they don't have access to care, and they don't have um, certain certain things in their lives that allow them to express what's going on with them and their mental health. And with all the information we have on a daily basis, like Like, we forget even just to give ourselves that, that information, go online and look up this information for ourselves. It's almost like we're scared. Like people talk about, I I mentioned praying the cray away. Like we come from a mid to upper class family. That's how we grew up. And my mom, my mom's a nurse. My mom (laughs) still thought she could pray my bipolar away. She still, she knew science. Like she knew science. My she dad took care he of researched. She, she, he, she, he researched bipolar, but yet still, it was one of those things in my family where it was like, oh, we got to shelter her, we got to cloak her, we got to pray on her, we got to do this, we got to, you know. So it, I, I came from that environment too. But what I learned, what where my privilege in that lied was I had a, I had a family that cared. You know, I had a family that truly cared about me and my well-being. My sister, my mom, my dad, all my extended relatives. When I was hurt, hurting, they were hurting. And eventually, what I realized was I don't have to hide who I am from my family and the people that I love. Mm-hmm. They accept me for who I am. It's It's been a long journey. It's been a long road. But I think what I would want black people to learn and all populations that are watching this episode to learn about about black people in general is we we as a people, we are very strong. We are resilient. We are very resilient. We are very tenacious. We never stop. We don't quit. You know, we we just we keep it pushing through the struggle. And that was given to us by our ancestors. That will to to fight Mm -hmm. was given to us by our our ancestors. So a couple, four years, what what year is it, 2021? Mm -hmm. Five years ago, five years ago. I was in the state of mania, hypomania at the time. I recognize it for what it is now. I was in hypomania. When I get into that state, I write quite a bit y'all know that I'm a writer I love my writing I write quite a bit and I got into a situation where um, I experienced racism Um, a woman felt or a female I should say felt uh, yeah a female she devil whatever (laughs) I'm trying to take the high road I'm trying to take the high road because I know she's listening (laughs) Um, so um, she knows what she did Uh, yeah so she she it was blatantly, it was blatant racist. Like it was almost like a matter of fact statement, a racist matter of fact statement. Like someone saying you love fried chicken. Obviously, that's a Dave Chappelle <laughs> reference. I was like, I didn't know blacks and chicken. When I saw you, you know, you, you know, the I joke. know, yeah. I know the joke. So like, it was just one of those statements. It was just, it was so blase, like matter like, of it fact, was so matter of factly racist. Like, <laughs> and I stood there and I thought to myself, 
And I'm going to reference, I'm going to say white privilege. I've thrown it out there. It's been said. Just relax. Okay? <laughs> Everybody cool down. Because <laughs> it is a thing. You know, white privilege is a thing. But I also want you to know that black, black privilege is a thing. And this is how I gave birth to this concept called black privilege and shout out to charlemagne the god who wrote a book called black privilege but he wrote it the year after i came <laughs> up with the original black privilege julian you know what you did um <laughs> so uh, getting that out of the, the way shade that be that the that, shade, that shots, this shots were shots have like, been fired the shade so so she was bla- it, and i thought i had to go home and i was and in, in that moment i was enraged by what she had said i was enraged and I had to go home and really think on it. I said, okay, you know, her, she, in her, her privilege and not checking her privilege at the door, she was able to say to me X, Y, Z things, mm-hmm. you know, she and was I so responded, she was so comfortable and I responded not in kind and not in the way she would expect, but I responded in a respectful manner, you know, to her. I did. Well, <laughs> did you? Because I yeah. wouldn't have. No, but I, I, mean. I, I told her. I told her in a university educated way, way where she could put it, like where she could, where mm-hmm. she could go, put herself. You know, I, I did. But I went home, and for some reason, it was just burning on me. Like, how, how dare this person? You know, invade my space as a black woman mm-hmm. in in the environment that we were in. And I had to, I had to find a reason in my mind to understand and empathize with this person and make it okay, and not make it okay, but realize, rise above it, and realize she might have white privilege, but you have black privilege. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean to you? To you, mm-hmm. what does being black mean to you? Why do you defend it so fiercely? Mm-hmm. Sorry, my throat is a little dry. <laughs> this is not ASMR. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, why do you the- defend your blackness so fiercely? Like, what is it? What is? Why do I? You know, I can't speak on. And again, this will say it in the speech. I don't speak for everyone. I'm speaking for myself. Mm-hmm. You know. So, disclaimer: you may not care <laughs> for the words that I am about to say. But these were my manic words that I wrote in 54 minutes <laughs> uh, over just an evening of experiencing racism. Racism. After, an, after a day of, of experiencing racism. And this is what I came up with. So here we go. Black privilege. Before I get into this topic, this new concept I'm developing, I want to preface it with this. I studied history at Carleton University for four years. I have a Bachelor of Arts honors in the subject. It's not a master's or a PhD, and I'm not professing to be an expert, but I do have four plus years of foundation on the topic. I've studied Canadian, American, European, Asian, and African history. I've studied the history of the world, which is rewritten as everyday passes, so it's impossible to ever study it fully. But this is what I've learned and some of the conclusions that I've come to, again, based on what I've learned. In the history of the world, at some point, everyone was oppressed by someone for some seemingly valid reason that made sense in that time and at that time. The English, for example, oppressed the Europeans, the Indians of Southeast Asia, the Asians of Southeast Asia, the Irish, the Scottish, and Africans. This period in history is called colonization. They justified their actions with religion and man-made laws and years of feudal tradition and a variety of other territorial ideologies that I cannot get into because it really doesn't matter the reason. It's a fact. It happened. Before the British Empire, there was the Ottoman Empire and the Roman Empire, etc. And for some reason, they thought it was a good idea to repress and place value on people and their families and their lives. A hierarchy was created and the concept was developed and has existed since the beginning of time. Leaders lead and followers follow. Sometimes there were good leaders that had the best interests of the people at heart. More often times there were leaders that made selfish decisions, letting absolute power cloud their judgment and cause immeasur- immeasurable, irreprehensible damage. To rule is to serve, and some people served others and some served themselves. This is a fact for the ancestors 
of the people who are currently inherit inherit inherited sorry this is a fact for the ancestors of the people who currently inherit the world. There we go. Uh, I have now given you a very broad and general statement about centuries and centuries of history, social history to be specific. It is now up to you to go and do your research and then see if you truly agree or disagree with the next statements I'm about to make. Though I've studied the history of the world, the history I'm most concerned with is my own. I was born in Guyana, South America. My ancestors were a part of the transatlantic slave trade. Essentially, the ships that left from Africa went to all different parts of the world, not just North America. If I were born a slave, I would have been raised in a Guyanese sugar plantation. If I look the way I do now, I have the same spirit or energy. If I could make people laugh or sing a song or had any special talent, I would have been a house slave. If I had no value beyond the ability to work long hours in extreme conditions, I would have been in the fields. Based on my knowledge of slavery and the slave trade, I believe this is all true. This is what African slavery looked like all around the world. I've also thought about what I would have done if I were a slave. Would I be born and live and die a slave? Or would I rage against the injustice of the experience and fight and flee to freedom? I could say with some measure of confidence that I would run, fight, and flee. I would risk getting caught, beaten, and killed. I would do anything I needed to do to get out. But I am not a slave. I was not born a slave. I'm not lived as a slave. I will not die a slave. So I actually can't say what I would do, only what I would hope to do and have the courage to do in that situation. I'm so grateful to my ancestors for carrying that burden, for being strong, for falling in love and making babies and preserving traditions for being resilient so that I would never have to be in the world that they left me and the world that I inherited. Now, when I speak about my ancestors, I'm not talking about the experience that shaped an entire faction of people. I'm speaking about the ancestors that are directly responsible for me being alive because they're the only people I feel I have the right to speak on behalf of. They are a part of me, they make up my history, and therefore I have that right. Based on what I know about my ancestors, I would say half made the best of an extremely horrifically bad situation and found a way not only to survive, but to thrive in their new circumstance. The other half did not. They were bitter and angry and resentful and afraid, and that's, that was their choice. That was how they dealt with the total destruction, degradation, and devastation that slavery caused. There is 400 plus years of history documenting the slave experience, interpreting and reinterpreting them, and it is painful to listen to, look at, and read. So I never tried to tackle it all, but instead I tried to make sense of how I came to be here and what I wanted my living history to be. This is what I know about how I came to be in the world that I inherited. My family, my parents, had a series of life experiences that led them to each other, and then on December 30th, 1982, I was born. This is when my history begins. My parents worked hard. They sacrificed and fought for me. They took me from a place where our ancestors were slaves, where I could have been born and lived and died a slave and they freed me. Because my parents grew up in Guyana and they knew the challenges that I would have to face and that I would inherit if I stayed. They wanted better for me more than they had. They had a dream, just like Martin Luther King Jr. And they did everything in their power to make it happen. Fast forward 34 years to today. I'm a first-generation Guyanese-Canadian immigrant with a Bachelor of Arts Honors in History, a graduate certificate in Public Relations and Communications from Humber College, and most recently a graduate certificate in Event Management from Durham College. I'm currently writing a novel, which I finished. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently writing a novel about my life experiences, and I have dreams of pursuing other things, and the confidence and security of knowing that everything I want is within my reach. I just have to keep working hard, and I will get there. My past experiences, my living history, the story that I've written for myself as a result of my parents' hard work, courage, perseverance, lack of pride, resilience, patience, tolerance, and overall awesomeness. I know that every dream I've ever had is going to become a reality. This glass ceiling that I heard so much about growing up, the limitations of black people, my parents shattered that ceiling before it ever got my way, so I've lived a life as if it never existed. 
ideas, circumstances, labels, and stereotypes associated with black people. They always offended me, but I've never let them affect the decisions I made about my life and my future. If the world said I couldn't do it because I'm black, I was always hell-bent on showing them I could do it, not because I'm black, but because I'm me. Onika Latoya Dainty, the sum total of my experiences. Living history, constantly learning, never asking permission or forgiveness unless I think I really need it, which I usually don't with permission, but always do with forgiveness. If I fail, I take a step back and ask myself why. I look to my support system of family and friends because I know that they're always there. And ultimately, I learn not to blame people outside of my control for the things that are inside of my control. The security and freedom of... This security and freedom has given me the confidence to smile and laugh and talk and listen to and learn from all kinds of people from all different parts of the world that I inherited. I look at things at my, from my point of view and let people look at things from theirs. I do not judge or diminish other people's experiences. I do not subscribe to negative labels. I do not let the concept of racism and all the burdens it brings dictates my actions. I'm kind to everyone until they give me a reason not to be. I try not to be cruel, but instead remember they are the sum total of their life experiences and they're living, they are also living history. And so every day is a new opportunity to change. I believe in love, not hate, though I know both exist in the world that I inherited. I know conflicts and wars. I know how conflicts and wars between people and nations begin, but I still can't say I understand why, because although it's happening in the world that I inherited, it is not a part of my living history. I can only be responsible and accountable for the decision I make when faced with conflict and adversity and challenges because according to my ancestors and my history and what I've learned, all that they expect of me is to do my best, to work hard, to fight when it's time to fight, to flee when it's time to flee, to love and fall in love and make babies and pass on traditions, to respect them and the burden they carried on their backs across the entire ocean beyond 400 plus years of struggle and pain to give me the gift I have today, the gift of security, safety, confidence, and support. That is the world that I live in. It's the only world I can exist in. The only one I know I can survive and thrive in like they did. That is the world that they left me. That is the world that I inherited. That is my black privilege. What is yours? Oh my gosh. (laughs) Listen, when she gets to reading something so deep that she's written, you get you, you just you get drawn in. Like that's why I sound like I'm like what you and then you're gonna ask you're gonna end it with a question. Like that's the that's the <laughs> well done, well done. TikTok reference. <laughs> well done, Jeffrey. Well done. So what is? Like, with everything going on, with pandemic, with systemic racism, with everything, police brutality, wellness checks that are, that are not ending very well. Like, what, what, is your, what is your reason to go forward? What is, why are you privileged? You ask me these questions and you know I'm going to say my babies. Like, <laughs> you ask me these questions every time. No, but, like, honestly, like just knowing that like we come from we come from a family where like our grandma had nine children by birth and two so 11 all together you know and like it was a struggle i get told the stories like like people used to try and buy our aunts and uncles and our mom like because like grandma couldn't wasn't able to like feed them and take care yeah. of them you know and stuff like that she said, so like i have to live on rice water salt and sugar my kids are staying together, together. like Nobody's that's the type my children like yeah like that's the type of history that we have like so to know that like i'm in a country where i can have kids freely as i please yeah <laughs> you know and i can raise is- them how i want to raise them freely like I I could I could pass on my family traditions. I could make new family traditions. Like mm-hmm. I have my own history, as you said, to make. Like this is my own living history with my family and stuff. Like it, that's my privilege. I feel it's like true. it's it's and a lot of people, you know, not even on, on a race note. Like a lot of people don't have that privilege to make a family or have mm-hmm. a family. Mm-hmm. So like just to know you that have like to look you have to look for those the goodness. Yeah, like just to know look that like goodness. I come from a very fertile family. 
very fertile. Very fertile. <laughs> and I was Hasn't able. Hit me yet, though. I, I was able to be fruitful of two children, and now I'm <laughs> able to carry coming. on, and you know, carry on th- their history and my own history, and make make memories together. Like it's just just to know that I could do that because I probably wouldn't have been able to do that in Guyana freely and and fruitfully. No. I would have had to have money under my belt before I could be pushing out no type of babies. So like you know, free healthcare. People. You know, it's the, just even saying that, like, because I hear people in America saying, like, how old, how old will your kid be when you pay off your medical bill from having them? And, and I'm like, not even a day. Not even a day. <laughs> not, even a day. not even a day. Not even a day. Not even a day. But we didn't pay for it. Yo, we listen, I've it. done, I've done OBGYN and I've done midwife. Not even a day. <laughs> What, what what bill? <laughs> what, 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 what bill? bill? What, what bill? Privilege to be Canadian. What privilege bill? to be Canadian. Privilege. privilege. Like privilege. No, like I have and I'm um, shout out to Emily. I want to shout out um my white crew. Um, <laughs> God love them. Uh they know who they are. Uh Grandma Judy, number one. Um Fran, number two, and Emily, number three. Emily's been on the show uh once or twice. Dr. Emily. Dr. Emily. Emily Dr. Nicholas Emily. and Dr. Emily. She's not no Put doctor. respect on her name. She's no, no, doc- no, that's Dr. Anya. Oh, that's Dr. Anya. Emily, no, Emily Nicholas Engel. You, she's been on the show. I haven't, I haven't met you her. You haven't yet. met, oh, okay, her. You haven't met her. But she always says, I- I'm shouting them out because, like, I'll give you an example. We know the temperature right now. Like, we know what's going on. We know about George Floyd, Black Lives Matter. We, we get, we're, If you're not aware, Trump. where have you, you know? been? Trump, like, like, where have you been? Where have you been? Proud Boys, like, we know, like, where have you been? Right. So what I can value and respect, like during that period of time, I found that a lot of people came up to me and and we know what kind of people I'm talking about. Yeah. Like a lot of people came up to me. People are not of our race. People not of of my race would come up to me and try to like, like show their support. But like by convincing me they weren't racist. Racist. (laughs) Like. (laughs) Like oh, I, I was, never, I, I was getting like, it outside the through building, and through. Outside, outside of my parents' building, an old woman came up to me. This was during COVID time too. This just happened during COVID. So she came up to me, invaded my COVID space to tell me, "Oh, um, I've never clutched a purse from a black person. I love all colored people." And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, well, come, like just by like lady, like I just want to, I just want to, I just want to go upstairs to my I bed. I just want to like, have the cigarette just, and like just go upstairs. I don't need all of this. Could but you please? the difference, the difference with the with people who try to prove that they're not racist in like my clan, my crew that I have, mm-hmm. they said to, they'd call me. I'm just checking the temperature. <laughs> Like, how are you feeling about all this stuff? How, you, going on the how are you feeling? How are you feeling? They didn't make it about them. They made it about my experiences. Mm-hmm. Like, how are you feeling? And then my friend Emily always says, when she says something like, I'll give you an example. Emily's like, oh, I'm going stir crazy at the at the cottage with my with my um, parents, with my in-laws and, and you know, my kid, blah, 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 whatever. You know, it's like three hours away. We just zoomed out of the city to, like, get away from COVID. But she's like, check your privilege. She'll say, check your privilege before she says that. Because <laughs> she wants me to know that I understand these are... These are these are privileged privilege rights. Right <laughs> problems. These are privileged problems. Like, we didn't, I didn't out have to anywhere cottage. to go during COVID. You know what shooting I mean? Shooting out like, to the cottage. Like, yeah, maybe girl, like, shooting out to my bedroom. <laughs> like, I didn't have anywhere to go during COVID. A lot of people have. So she recognizes her privilege. I can respect people who recognize they have privilege over another power. Pop- Agno- just acknowledge it. Don't say stuff like, I don't see color. Or like... Like just like acknowledge that you acknowledge have, that I'm acknowledge a I'm a human it. being without and, color. Ex- and attached. I'm not expecting you to apologize every single day for you know what your apology could be empathy. One hundred percent. Instead of instead of sympathizing, stop with the sympathy because there's a difference between sympathy and, and empathy. empathy. Mm. Sympathy means you've gone through the exact same thing I've gone through. You had cancer, I had cancer. We both had this kind <laughs> of cancer, and we both went through. And then I sympathize with you. you sympathize. That's not what. Stop sympathizing. <laughs> Have empathy. empathy. Just some simple empathy feel what i'm going through Be, and under, understand, understand it, it but don't try to relate to it on the level of what i have been through because we are both black women with mental health issues black women like 
we we have been through some stuff. I've I've been through a place where people are like, oh well, if you're going through something, we could you could just give your child up for adoption. Like you know, like you've what? never had you've never had people try to be like, well, what? you could just give your baby up for adoption. Have you ever like, had anyone say that to you? Or I, you know, I'm not I'm not calling anyone out, but Karen. <laughs> have you ever had anyone saying if you can't if you can't you know keep up with your with your responsibilities, just give the baby away? I think not. Oh I think gosh. not. I don't think anybody, mm. unless they're under du- duress, stress, get such get such commentary. So, and some of the other barriers. So, what are some what are some of the barriers we talked about? We talked about the socioeconomic, obviously, factor. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about it a little bit more, though. Mm-hmm. You know, we're living. Look at where I live. Look at like this is <laughs> look. This is poor land. You don't. Like, this is poverty. Want to see this is the concrete jungle is, no. of Toronto. <laughs> Like I don't belong here. Like I don't think anybody really belongs here economically. Nobody, no, nobody belongs here. No one wants to be here. here. Yeah. I let me finish my statement. I started with <laughs> me, but I was gonna expand to okay. everybody else. Okay. Like because it's not, it's not an environment that's conducive to positive mental health. Mm-hmm. It's not an environment conducive to exercise, eating healthy, having, um, you know, your, your time to meditate if that's what you choose to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not it's not con- it's not a conducive environment for, like I said, your mental health. And there's gentrification across the road. So and I there's mean- gentrification happening right across the road. <laughs> so this is going to be gone in like 50 years tops, like whatever. It's going to be gone. So they're going to send them somewhere. It's going to be gone. Yeah. So, yeah, I just... Uh, I can't, so I had to, like, head out to the suburbs, like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It's, but that's my privilege, my, because my parents came to this country, and they saved. And they paved a they long paved way. And they paved a long way for me to be able to say, you know what, I don't like my apartment downtown, I'm gonna move back into my parents' condo. <laughs> When my sister moves out into yeah. her own place, we're just going to keep switching it up and shifting it up. Like, whatever. We'll just go back and forth and we'll never leave them alone. Mm. I can do that no, with I'm my done. Purse. I'm done. I'm sorry. You're done? I'm, I'm, done. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> but, um, no, but I have that privilege. I had the privilege of being able to go to Carlton. Mm-hmm. My parent, my, my dad tried to bribe me with a freaking car. I had black privilege problems. Like, that was my black privilege problem. He's like, either you go to the U of T and get a car and commute, or you go away to Carlton. I'm like, oh, I'm going away to Carlton. Sorry, I'm having the full like experience. I I watched Saved by the Bell as a kid. I watched Saved by the Bell as a kid. Saved by the Bell college degree. I I watched Saved. I watched Different World. Like, no, I was going away. He's lucky I didn't know about Howard at the time. I would have got my ass to the black college. I would have got. You know what I'm saying? Like, Like, we didn't even have any inkling of like. Yo, no, like, Liddy, uh, yo, I listen. still want to go. Uh, yo, a part, you, sometimes, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, a part Liddy, of me is honestly? like, I'm like, let me, no, we, there's no. sororities, but not, not black. No, not my black ex soror- is in a fraternity, a black fraternity. So they're sporadic. Carlton. Carlton. Yeah, like, Carlton they're, they're ha- in. Western has sororities, U of T has sororities and fraternities, and then Carlton has sororities and fraternities. They're not down here, but there's a black one in in. Our, he's been in it for God, like at least fifteen. He's in years. it forever. No, but he like when he he's so, when it start, he's been in it from the, from the beginning. Oh. Like when it because it's a cha- it's an American chapter. It's an American uh, fraternity, and they bought a chapter over to Kent, to to Carlton. Yeah. Hey. So yeah, I always wanted to be in a sorority. I'm like, I wanted that sis. No, that I'm not paying for friends. I, oh. But that but if, aren't friends. you paying for also perks like grand no. perks? You're paying connections. No, yeah, no, no, d- no, 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 no. You're paying for friends. You're paying to drink and socialize. Mm-hmm. And you're paying to potentially like get yourself to some serious trouble. So like <laughs> what? Like, uh, I don't trust. I don't. Mm, I, don't. I think she's. I, I think, think you're she's... thinking of the American associations, the ones that like have the old boys clubs, the ones that are like the ones in Canada are. I'm sorry. Oh, just clubs, like kids clubs, right? I've seen what it is, but they basically a bunch of your brothers or whatever and you get Okay, you know what? I'll change I changed my tune. Yeah. Fraternities that's a brotherhood. That that can that'll get you to the next level, but sororities? Okay, 
So what? Thank you. Sororities. Like, really? No, sororities. I I don't know why we even got on this topic, but all I'm going to say about sororities, and I don't care if anyone was in a sorority or whatever. <laughs> like, I was approached to be in a sorority when I was at Carlton. All I saw them was doing, doing was drinking and carrying on and getting freaky with the fraternity boys and doing walk of shames the next morning after they drank too much smearing off ice been something more and volunteering every now and again. That's it. <laughs> like for petty sins. That's, that's, that's it. it. That that was sororities Yikes. at Carlton. I'm just I'm in a, I'm calling out the sororities at Carlton. Um not the ones anywhere else. Uh cuz I don't know what you're about, but I know what those ones were about. So mm. cuz I Damn. experienced it. So but uh, let's see. They're less like African Americans are less likely to have health insurance. Talk about it. Talk because these are here. Or no, America? Oh, okay. This is why. Okay, I have some stats here. I have some stats. I decided to veer off from the computer because it was really hurting my head and go back to just paper copy. So I printed some stats. They're of course American, and the reason why they are American, going back to Doctor Anyi, which I mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. Anyi Nanorum. Um, she was on the show maybe two years ago talking about um, race, systemic racism in mental health. Mm-hmm, and right. she talked about race-based data. So this race-based data concept is basically that we don't have any, because, because we, don't, we don't go in to mental health environments when we're ill. Go see doctors, go see therapists, go see psychiatrists. We're always, you mentioned in your article, they go to the ER. Mm-hmm. Or they get primary care, right? Yeah. So they don't have the data on black people to put out the, the research, to put out yeah, the, okay. to, to research and put out the statistics on what's going on mm-hmm. with the black population okay. to make a difference. If you don't have the data, you can't make a difference, mm-hmm. right? Very true. Okay. So the data that has been put out so far has obviously been American based mm-hmm. stuff, but you can imagine. This first one might not be relevant to uh, uh, African um, American or African Canadian, but health insurance in the sense of extended health insurance. I had to get extended health insurance so I could get a, a therapist, mm. right? Therapy is not, it's only free when you're far, 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 far gone. Other than that, you're on a wait list of anywhere from six months to a year. Mm hmm. You know, you got to combat, you got to combat with your family and the, and what their emotions are about, you know, around your mental health. You got to get yourselves on these lists. You've got to worry about medication. How are you going to pay for it? Like, I'm lucky I'm on, I have disability. Like, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like I have a job as well. So like I take care of myself. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, um, but a lot don't of people have don't yet. have that luxury, you know, like get even it's hard. It's hard. So that one might not factor in for us, but it does like for things like cognitive behavioral therapy, yeah. dialectical behavioral therapy, like it does. It does re- reflect on us, too. Uh, so there are African-Americans are less likely to receive an accurate mental health diagnosis. And for those who are diagnosed with depression, less likely to receive treatment. Um than their white counterparts are so again that could be internal that could be external that could be social that could be economic um but for some people black for some reason black people aren't getting the help they need you just scared of the doctor it's true we're scared of because for instance i have not finished reading this book and it's on my to-do list for this year i have to finish it before it gets to june but um the story of Henrietta Lacks. Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, so, um, and I could understand from, once again, our ancestors, our history, why we're scared to go to the doctors because basically what ended up happening in that story from what I've read so far is that um, Henrietta Lacks had cancer, uh, cervical cancer, and she went to the doctor for radiation therapy. Um, and they just dosed her up with a lot of radiation and took the cells of the cancer out of her cervix. And they found out that her cells could live longer than anyone else's cells that they've taken out of. So they use her cells. So they used her cells to create the polio, um, vaccine, like a lot of, a lot, her cells are still, are still around. Like they're still floating out there in medical facilities. Like they've cured, like she's, 
her cells have been the main source of curing a lot of a lot of diseases hmm. and a lot of vaccines and stuff like that. And and it was it was uh, it was so unknown till like I I believe until like to maybe 2015, 2013 like her daughter found out and she was she she lived in like I could be wrong. I'm just I'm putting it out there but like she lived in the south, small little house shack like mm-hmm. you know like what she probably would have inherited from her parents who would have got it from their slave owners, like, or whatever the case may be, like a little piece of land from, if I'm remembering from the story. So, yeah. So, but that, yeah. Yeah. So that's, it just, it just, it just, it, I, it makes me understand why, as black people, we're afraid to go to the doctor because we, we, we've been taught that like, you know, we either get, we either get brushed away and like our, our symptoms aren't taken seriously or we get misdiagnosed or we, we leave the doctor feeling worse than before we went in. It's so they just said cultural mistrust of mental health professionals and healthcare professionals in general is common in the African American community. That was yeah. excellent. You know what? You know what another thing it is. Of uh, sorry, do you know what another thing is? Um, it's hard when they nobody looks like you. Like none of the professionals that are dealing with you, they don't look like you. They don't. Oh, I've they dealt don't, with some. Well, one like, two. but yes, I know. What I've you mean. Like, never. Our, yeah, I've dealt. I have. I have this one. <laughs> talk about like my favorite article of clothing there's this one favorite doctor of mine couldn't say his name he's african but i go to the i'll go to this walking clinic just to see him because he's amazing he's amazing so thorough like he'll be like what's wrong with you like how long has it been going on like he seems so interested generally like all right we're gonna do this 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 test even if it seems extra for other doctors like he'll be like just to make sure this 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 a test and all right go and come back i'll call you if very thorough very thorough but like psychiatrists and psychologists. Oh, I tried to find black psychiatrists. That's, that's, they're that's, so they're, hard to find. Yeah, I've, I've. Mom they're has so, one. Right? I know. Mom I'm gonna one. get her one for myself. I think. Yeah. No, I'm good. But it's so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I need to get back I'm, into therapy. I'm good. Like I, I've decided. I've decided. I think I need. Um, I think I need a male. Therapist. A male therapist. Psychiatrist? A male therapist. therapist. I'm not too sure. I'm not picky on the race, but I think I need a male. I don't, I, I, I always have this fear that like my female psychiatrist will judge me. And I always wanted a black psychiatrist, but then I'm like, she might personally know my problems on another level and think that we're friends. And like, she could oh come and tell gosh. me, come tell me something about myself. And I could be like, no, don't come for me. <laughs> like, unless don't I time for you. Don't, ta- don't talk to me like that. Don't, don't <laughs> even, don't, don't even. Talk, don't talk to me like that. Yeah. Like, but the joke is like, I always wanted a black psychiatrist. Cause I was like, you know, like I wanted that person that, that personally, like you're my friend, but like I have friends for a reason. <laughs> like you're supposed to be professional with me. And I don't want, I don't want lines to be blurred. No blurred. I don't want lines to be blurred. So I feel like, Oh gosh! I feel like if I talk, so I, I feel like I, guys are more straight up. I like female doctors. I feel like male doctors are more straight up. I like female doctors. I don't mind them. No. So did you know? No, I did not. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> African Americans are twenty percent more likely to have serious psychological distress than whites are. I would have thought it was higher. So no, I did 20% not. Twenty percent more likely. Um, depression is one of the most common mental health problems in the United States, uh, affecting more than 17 million people each year. I can imagine that. Uh, and then it says African Americans' depressive occurrence are disabling, persistent, and resistant to treatment, and they extend those of white people. So they're resistant to treatment, but that's again. Because they don't trust doctors. Yeah. Because they don't trust doctors. Like. Suicide is the third leading cause of death among African Americans aged 15 to 24. That makes me so sad. What was that? Sorry. Suicide is the third leading cause of death among African Americans aged 15 to 24. Wow. 
And then it says African American men it was gun are violence, like no. not to be funny, but like you'd actually think it was gun violence would be it's like third gun violence is probably up there too. Oh. <laughs> You're like it's the third. It's still a possibility. It's still there's possibility. still two. There's still two notches. I'm just, I'm just saying. There's still two. We don't know what like, the other two are. I'm girls just treated it like Family Feud. Just <laughs> like there's still a possibility. There's still a possibility. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, African American men are four times more likely to die by suicide than African American women are. So it's like it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming knowing all this. All my life I had to fight. <laughs> oh Lord. I can't remember the big that rest of that little part that he sings, but we gonna be alright. <laughs> we gonna be alright. Kendrick's second best, like so. Oh, I wanted to mention Black Mental Health Day is March second. I don't know why they didn't get it in February. We're like we extended We're it. short three days. The, of but a the month. joke is we got them though. That's how we got them. We're technically Black History Month now lasts till March second. So we got our days. I gave. I said three hundred and sixty-five. So we got our days. So March second, guys, celebrating. Black Men's Health Day. Oh, we'll be posting on that day, too. Of course, we will be. So the thing of it is, Black History Month isn't what it used to be. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Black History Month is not what it used to be. Mm-hmm. Like, back in the day when I used to do, um, like, s- cultural shows, I'd dance to my girl, Yutende, we'd do African liturgical dancing, and then there'd be a big, like, cultural food fair, and, like, all mm-hmm. sorts of stuff would, would happen. To celebrate, like we learned that, like the guy that made peanut butter was like black, black. Yeah, like you know, everyone everybody. was like and all excited. Why is, why is that's everybody a staple? Know that like fact? Peter, that's a, if you don't, if cause you weren't paying attention in high school, air conditioner, air conditioner, traffic light, traffic light, and yeah, traffic light, and something else. I can't remember. There's another one. Yeah, but Peter Brothers one that sticks out to me. So, <laughs> yeah, like, you learn things. But, like, look at how school's now virtual. They might have taken, like, five minutes on February 1st to be like, yo, it's Black History Month. Here's some black facts. Like... <laughs> black facts. <laughs> black facts. <laughs> black facts. <laughs> like, here, take them home. Make sure you tell your parents we talked about it. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know what they did. I don't know what they did. I don't know what they're doing. That's the thing. I need you to... As as black people, we need to pass on because we don't. Our heritage is full of strife and struggle and pain and heartache. There's not a lot of positivity in our past, and but the thing is, as I said, those were our ancestors' struggles. Mm-hmm. Those were not our struggles. Mm-hmm. You know, we are privileged to just be having breath in our bodies. Based on what our ancestors did for all of us. I'm super privileged because I haven't talked to my, my kid about, about slavery. So I don't know if she knows. Yeah, like she... Uh, I have like no she idea would... if she knows anything about slavery. I have no idea if she knows what third world means. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, like... So, so you I'm know, of the privileged, privileged society. Exactly, like... So, but, like, how I would make it resonate with them, like... Just the fact that black people are, we're resilient. Like, we're resilient through thick and thin. Even even in our mental health struggles, as foolish as it may seem, to have to, to, have to, th- to, have to come to a realization that people believe in praying mental health issues away. Like, some might think it's foolish. It doesn't make sense. But, like, that's resilience. Like, because that means you're still dealing with your mental health problems. Yeah, you're still doing Like, something. you got God, but God only gives you the answers that you still have to work through the, the problem. You gotta, that, you still in gotta that work prayer, you're problem. working through the problem. Like, that, he might have the answer for you, but you still got to work through the problem as a person. So, like, that's resilience in itself. So, like, through everything, I would just want my kids to know that, like, we as black people, we are resilient. We went through 400 years of slavery. We went through whippings on our back till our skin was bust. We went through people lynching us because they didn't like the color of our skin. Like we went through people stealing our cells to for for science for science um the, you know the purposes per, it's per science purposes for the betterment of medicine. You know that was that was on us. That was on our, our out of our flesh, skin, and blood. Like that was from us. So like we could do anything. 
and nobody nobody could talk down about you about how you look the color of your skin anything like that like and also you know to reiterate like in the next like 25 30 years like there's Minorities are gonna take over. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna take hey. over. You see, you see. I'm so, I, I don't want to call out anybody spe- any specific race, but y- you know, y'all love them mixed babies. <laughs> so, oh lord, those girl. those you babies. Are those, 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 I'm just saying, like you are it, muy caliente. The, we're taking over. We're gonna take over. Oh so my gosh, what they didn't want will come to fruition. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna give you another speech. I'm gonna wrap it up. Um... How are you going to let your nieces know to be resilient? Even though you, I know babies I'm, will come. Uh, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> as if. As if. <laughs> as if. Oh my gosh, um, wait. You didn't even tell everybody that you spoke to a class of grade fours. Oh. <laughs> I spoke to a cl- my niece's grade four class for Bella's talk. Uh, it was nerve wracking and it reminded me why I don't want children. I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they're scary little people. Like they ask a lot of questions, man. Like I, I was in, I was in a hot it's seat. It's, it's, it's a, yeah, they're like, nine year olds, people. Like yeah, they're, they're very, very curious, and they could articulate and they could their spin curiosity. A tail. They could spit a tail like no other. This is the age that Bill, Co- not to mention Bill on the show, but Bill Cosby used to do the, <laughs> what's that show? What, what is the show? Um, Kids, Kids say, say the, the darndest, darndest things. things. When they're hitting eight, nine, they're saying some stuff, man. And they put you on the spot. So, like, it was tough, but it was good. So, hi, shout out to the class. You're not listening to this podcast. You Obviously should not be. Not, no. Maybe you should teacher. not be. Your teacher <laughs> might be, but you should not be. Um, no, but I've already talked a lot about why I feel privileged to be black. I just want to just say, though, I want, I want other populations to have some more empathy for the black population and for our history and for what we've gone through and maybe try to educate yourself beyond February a little bit uh, beyond 365 as you would say yeah like beyond uh, the inventors and what and and who invented peanut butter and the stop sign potentially might have done yeah you know like just like just put yourself walk a mile in our well we didn't even have shoes so black fact yeah I found out that you know people used to stuff our hair into chairs and pillows and pillows for yeah. your comfort so you know just just check up on your black facts that's all we're asking yeah empathy. just <laughs> empath- have a little bit more empathy like it's and don't and don't don't say stuff like i don't see color like don't colored please. means you see colored i don't see don't say like your and racism doesn't exist racism exists it still exists it still exists it's still a thing and and it's months like this it's months like february that raise awareness for a population that that's been marginalized for well since the beginning uh, you know since the beginning to this day and to this day so um i think we need to understand that and respect it and maybe start supporting our black brothers and sisters regardless of whether you're black or any other color like start supporting your your black brothers and sisters in their endeavors what they're doing their businesses you know just show that you care show that you respect the history and respect what we have gone through you know that's my only thing and for the black population i'm going to speak to you um 400 plus years but that was your ancestors burden don't make it yours for the rest of your life Mm. That's my only thing. I'm not saying it didn't hurt. I'm not saying you're not living in struggle. I'm not saying you're not living in ghettos and on the street and, and going through God only mental health issues, physical it's, health it's issues. Not saying it's not a generational it's curse. It's not a generational that, curse. That. I'm not saying you don't have generational trauma from what was done to our people. But I feel like you have to find you know make the, you have to find the joy in the sorrow you have to find you know the peace in the storm like. the peace in the storm the 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 sunshine after the rain like you have to find that and just look just search there has to be at least one thing because it's a thing like 
I just I would never trade being black for anything. No. I would never trade I would never be another color, culture, religion, race, whatever. I would never be any different than I am now. You know, learn that how rhythm, I would ever grow and flavor. Yeah, like growing up the way I grew up, <laughs> uh, I would never wish myself to be anything different. And if that's who you are, if that's how you feel, if you feel privileged to be black, do an affirmation in the mirror every day, man, and then let yourself know this is why I'm privileged to be black. Like, mm-hmm. you know, because we are privileged, we do have black privilege. Charlemagne said it, so it's got to be true. I purposely didn't read that last chapter, you know, because I was so afraid of like the cross connectivity between like what I wrote and what he might have wrote. But I really don't know what he wrote, so now like I'm cool with saying what I wrote. <laughs> like, sorry, Charlemagne. Fair enough. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's just my final. That's my final dish. I I just feel like, especially black people, like we need to elevate our status and we need to work with each other and instead of working against each other. And we need to love each other and we need to be kinder to one another. Um, And I think movements like Black Lives Matter, I think what's going on in the United States where people are rallying because they know. So much power that we have. We have a lot of power. We see people like Kamala's in the office now. We Mm. know Kamala's in in the hot seat now. So, you know. Auntie Mila. Yeah. Mm. (laughs) So, like, we've got a lot of power behind us. Let's use that force that that those god-given gifts let's use the, that force and just like let's push forward and push through you know maybe we're at the best they might have had you know in the last generation might not have been ours but next generation might be ours so that's what we're working towards so mm-hmm. us, we got a lot of power a lot of a lot to unlock a lot of a lot of yeah. keys like, yeah we need, but yeah, i think the biggest thing and just going back to the mental health part I think the biggest thing is in our community, we need to start talking about mental health a little bit more. Like we need to start discussing it beyond the church pews and beyond the Bible. Like we need to have the conversations with our family members. And if our family members don't understand hell, do what I did. I moved away and I got myself some help. I advocated for myself. I knew, I knew that this is not logical. Prayer is powerful. Don't get me wrong. I pray every day. It's powerful, but I also know God helps those who helps themselves yeah. and God created scientists and God created medication and all that stuff. You have to seek the help of what you, you got to work with what you got. You got to work with what you got. So, you know, seek help, talk about it, share, you know, share with people what you're going through. Don't keep it all inside. That's really, that's really key that's because true. you're not gonna, you're not I still gonna do it to this day. I'm, I'm yeah. just self-sabotager, but I mean, you know, I'll, like get, I'll get there. You'll get there. Be 30's honest. coming. It's coming. <laughs> 30's coming. I got to get the shit together real quick, real soon. It's real coming. Real soon. Real soon. It's coming. <laughs> oh, all right, B. I, if you guys want to tell us uh, any of your, any fun black history facts. Is that we're like, we're, we're, you know what? Yeah, sure, we'll do that. That's no, cool. that's not what I want to do. Uh, why you're privileged to be black? That yeah. makes no sense. Okay. <laughs> I, I, was, I was about to say. I'm like, mm. why you're privileged to be black? Yeah. Please write in, write in, write in, write in, write in. Hit our DMs. Hit our hit our our comments in the video. You're just letting us know why why you why you feel privileged. It's our it's our time. It's our month. And to and to inco- and to bring in all the populations and still shine on our month. Why you feel privileged? Don't say to no black person because I will slap you. <laughs> Is that what you're about to say? To be friends, family <laughs> members, married to no, whatever. No. I, I want to know. No, I want to know. I want to know. That is not okay. <laughs> is it not okay? You're almost as bad as the Durham scavenger hunt they tried to do at, at, at Durham the other day. And Durham, they tried to do the thing with the... With the, with the uh, I tried uh, something. To, uh, I tried a black, something. A black I tried history. to incorporate everybody. Hear this. A black history scavenger hunt. Talk to a black person. Write their name. <laughs> okay. Like I take it back. I did. take it back. They did. It was I all take over back. Twitter. It I, t- I take it back. It I take hot. it back. I take it back. Durham, I take it back. The region of take Durham? It was hot. I take it back. It was hot. I take it back. I hot, take it back. Dude, it, was, it was hot. It's all like, girl, you it, better. You better. Watch what you're saying. I take it back. I take it back. Just if, you know, if you'd like to email us or message us about black privilege or, you know, um, 
for everybody else, like how you'll show empathy <laughs> yeah. for BPOC. <laughs> Or B, B, specifically. B, B specifically. Um, you know, uh, yeah, you just hit us up. So that's how we'll do that one, guys. Sorry. <laughs> that's what I meant. I know you thought of the words, but, but they, didn't, they, they didn't come out of my thought, mouth the right way. But it's okay. So <laughs> if you guys would like to do that, you could reach us at dish at daintydish.com slash D Y S H at D A I N T Y dot com. And if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, give us five, you deserve five. And if you're listening to us on any other streaming service, please like, share, and subscribe. Um, and if you'd like to get a hold of us as a collective on the IG, our IG is Dainty Dish Podcast. So that's D A I N T Y D Y S H. P-O-D-C-A-S-T. And if you'd like to get of us a hold of us all individually, my Instagram is that mother bad XO. So that's T H A T M U V A B A D X O. And if you'd like to get a hold of Onika, hers is Best of Onika. That's B E S T O F O N I K A. And if you want to get a hold of Ellie, his is it's dot L O I T S dot E L L O. And if you'd like to get a hold of Tiana, her Instagram, or sorry, yeah. Her and yeah, Instagram. send her some well wishes. Yeah, send her some well wishes, guys. Um, her Instagram is honey T, so that's H O N E E Y T E E. Um, and if you'd like to get a hold of us on the Twitter, the Twitter of the Twit, the Twitter uh, of the Twat, <laughs> it is. It is at Onika Dainty, and I I don't know if I'm getting one soon, guys. I say it, I might. You know, 2021 has a lot of doors that might open up. But I have TikTok, same as my Instagram, so. Oh, Lord, she had to promote her Yeah, I do. Like, listen, like, funny content coming coming (laughs) soon, like, you know. We've been busting the jokes all day today. Listen, I'm saying, like, the humor helps the mental health you all if know you don't I mean. laugh you're gonna cry yeah and i i'm tired i of laugh crying. a lot i don't cry a lot i laugh a lot i'm tired of crying so you know time shit <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> you don't remember the drake intro we were like, like i'm tired i'm tired, <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> So Do you remember that one? Like, no, I don't remember that one. Just, just sign us out, please. Oh my gosh! All right, that has been the dish of the day. I hope y'all have yourselves a very, very, very happy hump day.